1% richest Indians capture 20% of national income in 2013. This is up from about 6% in the mid-1980s. And we observe before, uh, from 1938 to the mid-1980s, a sharp reduction in uh, the share of income held by the top 1%, from about a bit more than 21%, or around 21%, to 6% due to a series of shocks on the owners of, of capital, due also to the implementation of uh, uh, regulated uh, regulation policies, so uh, nationalizations of many sectors of the economy, including banking, including transportation, inc including um, a lot of sectors of the economy, along with very high tax rates, so tax prog progressivity was very high, uh, in the 60s, 70s, up to the early 80s, with the top marginal income tax rate going as high as uh, 97%. With an inheritance tax uh, implemented uh, for a short period of time uh, during, this, during this period. And with, in fact, an, uh, an explicit objective uh, by Nehru and by his followers to limit the power of the economic elite. So this was uh, clearly one of the objectives of, uh, of the government. And uh, so this period, uh, which, starts, uh, which starts at the end of the, at the beginning of the Second World War, which is prolonged uh, after, after independence, actually follows a period of rise in income inequality from at least for the, for the period for the, the st from the start of the in Indian income tax from 1922 to 1938, during which we witness, we observe a rise in inequality, which is likely to be due to um, economic transformations at the time, which favored uh, capitalists uh, over workers. So basically, from 1950 to uh, the mid-80s, uh, clearly um, you see a reduction in top income uh, levels. So there's a reduction in, uh, in income, so a negative growth for uh, individuals at the very top of uh, the social ladder or of the income distribution, as economists uh, uh, say. And growth mostly benefited to uh, the bottom 50%, the middle income group, the middle 40% during from 1950 to uh, the mid-1980s. Now, um, of course, overall growth was uh, much lower or slightly lower uh, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s that than in uh, in the next uh, period, uh, but uh, in the next period, if uh, growth rate were higher, it was essentially captured, this new growth was essentially captured by the top of the distribution, the top 10%, the top 1%. In fact, the, uh, from 19, 1980 to 2014, the top 0.1%, the richest 0.1% Indians captured as much growth as the entire bottom 50% combined. This highlights the, the very unequal nature of, uh, of Shining India, uh, of the growth policies implemented over the past decades. And in fact, the fact that uh, basically the majority of the population did not experience the kinds of growth rate that we hear uh, in the media regularly, uh, these growth rates, um, in fact, the growth rate that they experienced were lower than the average. So basically what we see in this, um, in this data um, goes uh, contrary to, uh, to, this, uh, um, to this intuition um, in public discourse in the mind of a lot of people that there was high middle class growth. I mean, the middle 40% grew at a faster rate in the 2000 and the 2010s, faster at a faster rate than in the 90s than in the 80s. However, what we show uh, in this paper is that it grew much uh, less than the average. And in fact, Shining India essentially happened at the very top of the distribution. So then the question we ask is, how do we define a middle class? This is, uh, this is not an easy task to do. If we define it in a very simple way, uh, there are many different ways to define it, but in very simple term as the individuals between above the poorest half and below the richest 10 percent, so the middle 40 percent. Well, these uh, this group these group of individuals didn't benefit uh, a lot from uh, the high growth years of the post 2000s.